Hello, sports fans, baseball fans, and Stratomatic baseball fans. I'm here again, Sportsman Z, with another Hall of Famer game. You seem to be pretty popular, so I'm doing another one. So today's matchup is going to be, and as you know from the last video, if you watched the very last one that I put up, and that will be uh, linked in the uh, end screen, you know that I'm starting to name these teams now instead of just give them numbers. Today's matchup is going to be Musial's Marauders against the K-Men. And I will get to why the uh, second team is the K-Men in a minute. So here is the, here are the lineups and the pitching. You got Musial's Marauders are going to start off with Marinville at short, Musial in center, Garrig at first, Johnny Mize at DH, Melod in right, Eddie Matthews at third, Tommy McCarthy in left, Tony Lazari at second, and Eddie Lombardi will be the catcher. Or is it Ernie Lombardi? I don't know. So what, I think maybe it's Ernie Lombardi. And Joe Iron Joe McGinnity will be the pitcher for Musial's Marauders. And for the K-Men, they're going to line up as Sliding Billy Hamilton in center, Harry Hooper in right, Hornsby at second, Reggie Jackson at DH, Ralph Kiner at first base, Joe Jackson in left, Gabby Hartnett at catcher, George Kell at third base, and then Huey Jennings at shortstop with Catfish Hunter on the mound. So Catfish Hunter and Reggie Jackson, contemporaries, and they will be, and they played on the same Yankees team, some of the same Yankees teams. Now to get what to why the second team is the K-Men, not only do you have Kiner and Kell in their starting lineup, but you also have on the team, uh, like I said, Kell and Kiner, you have Sandy Koufax, George Kelly, Chuck Klein, Joe Kelly, Harmon Killebrew, Tim Keefe, King Kelly, L. Kaline, and Willie and Wee Willie Keeler. So that's why they are the K-Men. Not because they strike out a lot, although that may happen, but because they have a lot of guys with K in their names. So the K-Men are at home, and Musial's Marauders are the visiting team. And they're going to lead off right now with Rabbit Marinville. Is that right? Yes, Rabbit Marinville, shortstop one. In the Hall of Fame, in my opinion, mainly because he was a good defensive shortstop. Because his batting average lifetime was 258. And he only had 28 homers. So that wasn't why he got in the Hall of Fame. And he gets a 3-5, which is going to be a double. So... The uh, Marauders lead off with a double by um, Marinville, and that brings up Stan the Man Musial, the team captain. And he gets a 2-3, which is a ground ball second base. So that's one away. And uh, Marinville still at second. Lou Gehrig up. And let's roll that nice again. And that is a 2-9, which is a fly ball to right. Two away. And we are going to Johnny Mize. So let me see. We got a got an out. I didn't record what kind. Out, out. And Johnny Mize up. And he gets a 4-6. And that is on Catfish Hunter's card. And it is a fly ball to center field. So we got that one. And there's no runs coming across. For the Marauders in the first, and they will send up 
sliding Billy Hamilton. Both teams leading off with with uh, noted speedsters. And that is a 1-6, which is a ground ball to first base. One away. And that brings up Harry Hooper. Harry Hooper today, the right fielder for the team. 5'9 on McGinnity's card is um, a fly ball to left field. So there's two down quickly, and Rogers Hornsby is up. Rogers Hornsby career had a 358 batting average with 301 home runs. And that is a 4-7, and it will be a line out to third base. So Hornsby lines out to five, and there are no runs in the first for the K-Men, which don't have a lot of K-Men playing today, but they do have a lot of K-Men on the bench. And we go back to Musial's Marauders with Mel Ott leading off in the second inning for them. And that is a 4-8. And that is going to be a single. And that is a single to right between short and third. So Eddie, so uh, Melop with a single. And that's a second hit allowed by Hunter. I got to keep track of this. Eddie Matthews comes up. Eddie Matthews had a lot of home run power. He hit 512 home runs in his career and hit 271. And he gets a 5-5, and that is going to be a strikeout. And that's the first strikeout for Hunter. And uh, Matthews with the K. Tommy McCarthy, who I really, to be honest with you, I've never heard, I had never heard of Tommy McCarthy before I saw his card in this great set of awesome cards that Strat puts out for the Hall of Fame. 3-8 is a ground ball third base B and now Tommy McCarthy is at first. And that brings up Tony Lazari. Tony Lazari who played on the 27 Yankees. And he gets a 4-6. And that is a fly ball to center field. And he is out. And no runs come in in the second for the Marauders. And that brings up the, uh, what did he say, the stick that stirs the drink, Reggie Jackson, who was, you know, um, uh, his manager, forget his name, was not a big fan of him. <laughs> Names, they just disappear out of my head, like it's going out of style. But anyway, Reggie Jackson. And he gets a 4-3, and that is a ground ball to the pitcher, and that's McGinnity. He is a pitcher 2. That is a 3. That's going to be something, I think. And it No, it isn't. It's an out. It's, it is something. It's an out. So he goes out 1-3. to three. And that brings up Ralph Kiner. He gets a 1-12. That's a fly ball center field A. So he flies out to center. And uh, Joe Jackson, shoeless Joe Jackson of my White Sox of 1919. And he gets a 6-9. And that is going to be a fly ball to right. He flies out to right. No runs come across. And you've got a perfect game so far being pitched by uh, Joe, Iron Joe McGinnity. But his, uh, his, uh, but the score is still tied. And, you know, we'll see who breaks through first. The first batter for Musial's Marauders in the third is going to be Eddie Ernie. There it is, Ernie Lombardi. Ernie Lombardi, who was notoriously slow. He was thrown out at first base one time on a ball that would have been a double for anybody else. That's what I read. Anyway, 
I never saw the man play, but that is slowness. And what he actually ends up getting is a home run. Ernie Lombardi goes deep, and he had 190 of those in his career. So, and that is not an out. He gets a home run, the ninth batter. And that is a home run given up by Hunter. And that is, it's a one nothing lead now for the Marauders. And, and Rabbit Marinville comes up. And he gets a 6-8. And that is going to be a single. So Marinville gets a hit. And it does not look like Catfish Hunter is, his, is on top of his game here. Probably wasn't the best choice for this team against a Hall of Fame lineup. But we will see. Stan the Man Musial is up. He gets a 311, and that's a single. So, yeah, he is getting, he's really getting hit up pretty good here. Lou Gehrig up with two men on at first and second and no outs. And that is a 3-6, and that's going to be a three-run home run by Lou Gehrig. We're going we're gonna to color these all in. We're going to give Hunter another hit allowed, another home run allowed, and one, two, three runs. And he is down four, nothing. And they are going to go get somebody up in the bullpen because they really need to do that. And they will get Jesse Haynes up in the pen. And Johnny Mize is coming up. Johnny Mize coming up, no men on, and no outs. But four runs already in for the Marauders. And he gets a 6-4, and that is a fly ball to right field. One away. So that's the first out of the third inning for the Marauders, and that brings Mel Ott to the plate. Mellot gets a 3-2. That's a ground ball to first. Two away. We'll say he goes out 3-1. to one. And Eddie Matthews up. Again, Eddie Matthews, 512 home runs lifetime. And that is a 6-11. And that is going to be a ground ball to the pitcher. And Hunter throws Matthews out. That's 1-3. And uh, they get a lot of runs right there. Four runs. That is a four-run eruption for the Marauders. And Gabby Hartnett is up at the plate for the K-Men. And McGinnity now, not only is, is he sailing, but he's got a four-run lead. He's got to love that. And that is a 6-10, which is a line out to second base. One away, and up steps George Kell. George Kell gets a 5-10, and that is a ground ball to the third baseman. And uh, the third baseman for the Marauders is Matthews. He's a 3. That is a 19. 19 and 3 is a two-base error. So they have their first base runner, but it's on by an error. So that's an E5 by uh, Matthews. And Huey Jennings up. And he gets a 2-7, which is a single double asterisk and knocks in an unearned run. And that's going to be the first hit allowed for McGinnity. Man at first. Only one out. And Billy Sliding Billy Hamilton is up the plate. He gets a 4-3. That is a ground ball to the pitcher. He is a 2. That's a 12. That's going to be something bad for him. That is a one base error. So another error. McGinnity makes an error. And uh, yeah. 
That's two men on now. Um, so that's an E1. Moving Jennings to second. And now Harry Hooper is up. Harry Hooper gets a 2-9, which is a fly ball center field. Two away. And that brings up Rogers Hornsby, probably the best hitter in this game, as far as just pure hitting. 6-7 is a ground ball to the second baseman. The second baseman for the, for the Marauders is Lazari. He is a 2. That is a 20. It's probably an out, and it is. And so uh, Hornsby goes 4-3. to three. And the K-Men only get one run. And we go to the top of the fourth. And there will be a pitching change in the top of the fourth. And that is going to be Jesse Haynes. So we're going to close the book on um, Hunter. Hunter only pitches... What is it? Three innings? He pitches three innings, allows six hits. Um, six hits and... No, he didn't allow... He... Yeah, he did not strike out four. He struck out like one. So he pitches three innings, allows six hits and four earned runs on two homers. And Tommy McCarthy is the first man that's going to face the new pitcher, Jesse Haynes. And he gets a 2-7, which is a single. Tommy McCarthy ripping a hit. So, let's see. Yeah. He gets a leadoff single off of Haynes, and so that's a hit allowed by Haynes. And I, the uh, the K-Men just don't have a pitcher that can shut this team down. Lazare is up. He gets a 6-11. That is a ground ball um, first base C. So first baseman makes the play himself. And uh, there is one down with a man at second. And Ernie Lombardi up. And he gets a 6-4. And that is going to be a pop out to first. There's two down. Bringing Rabbit Marinville up. And he gets a 210, which is a ground ball to the third baseman. So he grounds out um, 5 to 3. And did they get a did they get a run? They did not get a run, no. So we go to the bottom of the fourth, and it is still 4 to 1. Bottom of the fourth. Came in, down by three, looking to get three runs. Looking to get breakthrough on McGinnity. He's only given up one hit, but two people have made an error, including himself. Reggie Jackson is up. Reggie Jackson with a ground ball to the second baseman, one away. Ralph Kiner is up. Ralph Kiner with a 4-10. And that is... A um, that's going to be a catcher card, and that's a six. The catcher for the um, for the Marauders is Mel Ott, or no, not Mel Ott. I'm I was thinking of his son Ed Ott. <laughs> um, Ernie Lombardi, and he is a catcher too, and that was a six, and that's an out on dribbler, two away. Two to one or two to three. Kiner goes, and uh, that brings Shoeless Joe. Say it isn't so, Joe. Of course, one of the famous um, eight men out. Uh, Twenty nineteen White Sox. Six five was questionable whether he really was involved, and that is going to be a pop out to shortstop. Pop out to six. They don't get any runs. We go to the top of the fifth. Top of the fifth inning. Haynes is still out there. Stan Musial is up. He gets a 210. That is a walk. 
So Musial, the team captain, drawing a walk, trying to set the, the uh, pace for his team. And that brings up Lou Gehrig. And that is a 3-7, and that is going to be a double. So that'll move Musial to third. They're not going to get greedy. He takes the double, and that moves uh, Musial over to third. That is a hit and a walk allowed that I didn't record by Haynes. And now runners are at second and third with no outs, and they will bring the infield in for Johnny Mai. And Johnny Mize gets a 2-2, which is a walk, and loads the bases. Yeah. And that is another walk given up by Haynes. And that brings to the plate Mellot, right? Yeah. Infield is back. They're going to play for the double play. And that is a 4-8. But that's a single. That's just a plain out single. It would have been a hit anyway. And it is another run. And now Haynes gives up a run of his own. And that brings Eddie Matthews to the plate with the bases loaded. They're just playing station to station, and why not? I mean, McGinnity is great, and uh, no one's breaking through here. That is a 6-9 on Haynes, and that is going to be a ground ball to the shortstop. Hopefully, that is a double play. Um, they're going to hope. But uh, let's see. Shortstop is a 1, and that is an 18. So we'll see what happens on that. 18 1 is an out double play, but a run does score. Uh, Matthews goes 4 6 3. A run does score, but it isn't an RBI for him. It is, however, an earned run for Haynes. And that brings up Tommy McCarthy with two down, man at third. And that is a 4-7. And that's going to be a line out to shortstop. So McCarthy lines out to short. And the, um, the Marauders get two more runs in the fifth. And we are going to the bottom of the fifth with the K-Men down. The K-Men are batting and they are down by the score of... 6-1. They got a lot of work to do. Gabby Hartnett will be the leadoff batter in the fifth for the team. And he gets a 2-7, which is a walk. So Gabby Hartnett gets a board. And uh, that, that gives them a little bit of something maybe that they can work with. McGinnity, the first walk allowed by him. George Kell is up. George Kell gets a 3-5, which is a single level asterisk, and moves runners to the corners with no outs. So this is the first time that they've mounted any kind of a real attack against Iron Joe. And uh, Huey Jennings is up at the plate. They're going to play the infield back because they're up 6-1. That is a 3-12, which is a fly ball to right field and scores the runner from third. It's one out. So Jennings with the fly out to nine and the run comes in and Billy Hamilton is up at the plate with one down and one man on at first base you get the three nine which is a fly ball to the center fielder so that's going to be two down for the Marauder or for the K-Man and Harry Hooper is up at the plate. Harry Hooper with the big 6-12, and that's a pop-out to first. Pop-out to three. They get one run, but that only makes the score 6-2. Not real good. Not a real good situation. And there will be another pitching change for the K-Men. 
So you can close the book on um, on Haynes after two innings. He goes two innings, allows three hits, and two earned runs, and walks two. And they are going to bring in Wait Hoyt. So you got Wait Hoyt coming in to pitch to Tony Lazari in the sixth inning with Lazari's team up six to two. And you get to one five, which is a double. So that's a leadoff double. They are just really scorching this um, K Men pitching staff. So that's a hit allowed by Hoyt, who was, I believe, a knuckleballer primarily. And in fact, Wait Hoyt is his career record was 237 and 182 with a 359 earned run average. Ernie Lombardi, man at second, no out, and that's a 6-8, and that is going to be a single double asterisk and knock in another run. So, Ernie Lombardi has two hits today, and, uh, and two RBIs. And that's another hit given up by Hoyt, and another earned run. The, their, this pitching for the K-Man has just been abysmal. Rabbit, Rabbit Marinville gets a 6-4. That is a pop-out to short, one away. And I believe that's the first out. Indeed it is. One down and Stan the man. Musial, the team captain, gets a 3-7. And that is going to be a double and moves Rabbit Marinville to third. They're just going station to station, just a leisurely game, you know out for a little day at the park and uh, and why not I mean they're they're already winning uh, right now seven to one so they don't have any need to extend base runners and you know pull a hamstring or anything Lou Gary he gets a five six and that is going to be a pop out to second two away and um, pop out to um, Four. And there's two down, and Johnny Mize is up. And Johnny Mize gets a 4-3, and that is a ground ball first base. So he is out 3-1. to one. And they do get a run in the sixth, and they now lead 7-2. to two. We go to the bottom of the sixth, and um, Rogers Hornsby is the batter for the uh, K-Men. And uh, McGinnity is still out there. McGinnity, you got to figure, is going to at least pitch this inning. Um, uh, you know, back in the day, they wouldn't want to come out this early. So, Robert Hornsby up, and he gets a 4-3, and that is a ground ball to the pitcher. He is a 2, that's a 17. That's going to be probably an out, and it is. So, it's 1-3 to three for Hornsby. One down, and Reggie, Reggie Jackson, and he gets a 6-9, and that is going to be a fly ball to right field, two away, and Ralph Kiner. Ralph Kiner gets a 6-4, and that is a fly ball to the center fielder. The center fielder for the Marauders is... Musial, he is a three, but that's a, it's a roll of a seven, so it's probably an out, and it is. And so that was uh, Ralph Kiner flying out to center field. And now we are going to have some wholesale changes for the Marauders going to the top of the seventh, and the Marauders up seven to two. All right, coming on to bat is Jim O'Rourke, and he is going to be batting for Mel Ott. And we assume going into right field for him, but we will see when they go when they take the field. And that is a 5 9, which is a ground ball to the shortstop. And the shortstop for the K men is Jennings, and he is a 1. And that is a 4, it's probably an out, and it is. So O'Rourke goes 6 to 1 in his uh, debut appearance in this game. 
And that brings Freddie Lindstrom up, and Freddie Lindstrom is pinch hitting for Eddie Matthews. And that is going to be a 210, which is a line out to third base. So line out to five. And that brings up Tommy McCarthy. Tommy McCarthy, of course, started the game in right field and is still out there, apparently. And he gets a 4-8, and that is going to be a line out to third base. Line out to five. The Marauders get no runs. We go to the bottom of the seventh. And, of course, uh, we will detail those changes for you. Um, O'Rourke is going in at right field. Lindstrom in at third. And there is a new second baseman as well, and that's going to be Nap LaJoy going in for Tony Lazari. And Joe Jackson is the first batter coming up here in the bottom of the seventh inning for the K-Men. And that's a 5-12, which is a pop-out to short. So Jackson out, pop-out to six. Brings up Gabby Hartnett, the catcher. He gets a 2-11, which is a, lot, a ground ball to third base. So he goes 5-3. to three. And that brings George Kell up to, to the plate to face Joe McGinnity, Iron Joe. You know, he's still out there, and he didn't get the name Iron Joe for leaving after six or seven innings. And that is going to be a single. George Kell does get a base hit. And it's been the first in a while for this team, and it's only the third hit allowed by McGinnity. And Huey Jennings. And Huey Jennings gets 3-3, three, three, and that's a line out to third base. Line out to five. No runs come across for the K-Men. We go to the top of the eighth inning. And you got Nap LaJoy, as I mentioned, was coming in at second base. And he will be batting for the Marauders. And he's actually a better defensive second baseman than the Lazari was, too. And that's a 5-8. To Wait Hoyt, who is still out there, fly ball left field, one away. He did pitch well last inning, so one down, and Ernie Lombardi, the catcher, is up. That is a 5 7. That is going to be a single. So Lombardi with the hit, and that's yet another hit for him. He is two for three today with a home run. And Rabbit Marinville is up and will get another hit allowed for Hoyt. That is a 3-7 and that is a single. And uh, they're just, like I said, they're just playing station to station because why not? And the batter is now Stan the Man Musial, the captain of this team. And he gets a 212, which is a ground ball third base plus injury. But we're going to ignore the injury because we're doing this um, just a one off game here. So he grounds out. Um, let's see, what was that? Uh, third base. So he goes uh, fielder's choice. And there is two down now with. Lou Gehrig up. And Lou Gehrig gets a 2-3, which is a fly ball center field. And no runs come in. It came close. They came close to getting a run, another run, yet another run, but they did not. We go to the bottom of the eighth, and sliding, sliding Billy Hamilton will be up against... Iron Joe McGinnity looks like they plan on him going the distance unless he gets into a lot of trouble. That is a 4-7, and that is going to be a line out to third base. So, Billy Hamilton, um, line out to five. In the eight, one down, nobody on, and Harry Hooper. 
he gets a 6-7, which is a ground ball to the second baseman. The second baseman is now LeJoy, who is a 1. That is an 18, and that is a roll again. And that is a 14, probably going to be an out, and it is. So Hornsby is out. And uh, as I mentioned, Hornsby, or wait a minute, is that, was that Hornsby? Or no, that was Hooper. That was Hooper. Yeah. Um, ground out, 4-3. And now Hornsby is up. I think Hornsby is up. Hopefully that wasn't a mistake on my part. And that is a 2-6, which is the ground ball third base. So Hornsby goes out 5-3. to three. And as I mentioned, Hornsby, the best, probably the best hitter in this game, he is 0-4. for 4. So we're going to go to the top of the ninth inning. And uh, the Marauders are sending up um, Johnny Mize. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. And in fact, no, it isn't. They're going to pinch hit for him. We want to get as many guys into this game, I guess, as you would want to possibly see. So Hank Greenberg is going to pinch hit right here for Johnny Mize and be the new DH. So we're going to give Hank Greenberg a chance to get a plate appearance here. And against um, Wait Hoyt, I mean, I guess they figure why even bother taking Hoyt out of the game. 2-6, that's a strikeout. Greenberg with a strikeout in his first and only, what probably will be his only plate appearance. Jim O'Rourke is up for his second plate appearance of the game. He gets a 6-7, and that is a ground ball to the second baseman. The second baseman is a 2, and that is a 20. 20 and 2 at second is an out. So O'Rourke grounds out 4-3. And that brings Freddie Lindstrom up for his second plate appearance. He was out in his first plate appearance. He gets a 1-6, and that is a ground ball shortstop, and he goes 6-3. to three. And the Marauders get no runs in the ninth. We go to the bottom of the ninth inning with the Marauders up by the score of 7-2. to two. The, uh, the K-Men need five runs right here off of Iron Joe McGinnity, and they haven't been able to really almost even touch him all game. And Reggie Jackson will be the first guy that tries to break into this, and he gets a strikeout. So Jackson with the K in the ninth to lead it off. One away. And Ralph Kiner up. Ralph Kiner with a 5-12 is a pop-out to shortstop. Pop-out to 6. And that leaves it all up to Shoeless Joe. Say it ain't so, Joe. And that is a 2-11, and that's ground ball pitcher A, 3-1, or 1-3. And that will be the game. No runs come in in the ninth for the K-Men, who end up losing this game by the score of 7-2. And uh, Hoyt goes the last four innings, I guess. Three, five, yeah. Goes the last four innings. He allows five hits and one earned run. McGinnity goes the distance, gets the win, and allows only three hits and a walk. And no earned runs, although two did come in because of two errors in the inning in which those runs scored. And so that is it from here with the Musial's Marauders taking down the K-Men in the biggest way by the score of 7-2. And that'll be it for me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing up.